Hello, Rob Cornish here. I hope you're well. And what I'd like to do is share with you a really cool free online tool which I've been using in my online business for creating graphics. Now, most of the time, um, I actually outsource graphics. Um, and I do that because, A, it's very cost effective to pay somebody else, another designer, to, to do that for me. And secondly, really, to be honest, if I'm honest with you, graphics is not really my forte at all. Okay, Now everyone's different of course, but I think that's an important point because you don't have to be um, you know, great at every single thing to be successful in business, whether it's online or offline. What you do need to do is, is be able to delegate those things that you don't like or that you're not keen on to other people. Okay, So you get more leverage and you actually can move forward. So I think that's an important thing that I wanted to mention at the start. But that said, um, I do create very simple graphics from time to time. Um, Things like uh, you know when I have a piece of text on a sales page, maybe with a little image uh, um, on it, and things like that. So very simple stuff. And this is the tool I use. I've tried lots of different um, tools on the web and, and software programs and and so on. But this is absolutely my favourite, and it's something that I really recommend to you. And this is sort of why I wanted to share it with you. So um, the website um, I'm talking about is called Pixlr. All right. If you go to P I X L R, P I X L R, um, search in Google. Here we go, Pixlr.com, and I can go there, and you'll get some different options. Now um, I'm going to choose the second option, which is the one I use, or one I recommend to you, the advanced option. Okay. So we'll click there. And you can either work on a previous image or you can actually create a new one. Let's create a new one. And what I thought we'd do is create a very simple um, website banner. Okay, so a header really for, for um, the top of your website. And um, again, this is something that I would normally outsource. And um, it'll probably look completely terrible as well. But really, the only purpose of, of, of this video is so I can tell you about this tool and show you some of the basic functions in it okay so please um, keep that in mind and don't be too critical of uh, um, that you know the monstrosity that I'm about to create all right um, it's really just to show you around the tool so you can actually use it yourself all right so what we'll do we'll call this um, uh, header or we we'll call it I tell you what website header how about that okay and um, what I want to do actually is, is create this a specific width and height. Now I actually have um, a website. Um, let me go to that website here. Um, and you can see it's complete sort of blank website, very simple, just one uh, post and a page here. Um, and it's just really a test website that I use for trying out different things and, and experimenting with. So what we can do is actually go into the back end of that website, okay, into the WordPress dashboard. And what I'll do is I'll come down to appearance. And just to show you to start with, if I go to themes, you'll see I'm running the 2012 theme here. Okay. Now there are um, premium themes you, you can get. I, I use and recommend a thesis and also woo themes are excellent. Okay. But they're going to cost you sort of $97, maybe even a little bit more. So if you're looking for a free theme and you're not ready to invest in a, in a kind of paid theme, then actually the WordPress themes 2012 and I think there's a 2011 as well are really, really pretty good. And you can get some great looking websites, you know, um, and they actually have some quite good customization features on them as well. So I just wanted to point that out um, before we get into the actual header stuff. But if I go to... Um, appearance and header now and you can see that it, it's saying with a custom header the suggested width is 960 pixels and the height is 250 okay so let's actually um, go and set that in in pixel okay so 960 by 250 so we'll go back and I'm going to put in 960 and we'll go to height here 250 all right and we'll click OK now you can see 
what's happened is if I bring this window down this is the image that I'm the blank image that I'm going to design and you can resize this you can drag it down a little bit and you can see that white rectangle there is is, is actually what will be my header all right now it is going to look bad, like I said, but I just want to show you the functions. Uh, so the first thing we can do is say, um, let's make the background a different color. So for that, I can go to Tools here on the left and select uh, the Paint Bucket tool. All right, so I'll select that, just click there, and let's just have a different color. So I'll click down here, and you've got a color selector. So um, let's go for some kind of blue, shall we? Something like that. Uh, so maybe there, and I'll bring this across. Uh, very light blue there we go and I'll click OK and then all I do is left click in this area and we change the background color okay now the next thing I thought would be good to have an image on it okay so what I've done is I found this image which is actually um, off the stock exchange website it's got the weirdest URL ever I think um, and it's sxc.hu sxc.hu so very strange uh, I've yet to find a weirder URL but anyway um, let's what I thought we do is just create a, a pretend it's a photography website okay because that's a very profitable niche online okay so what we'll do is right click here we'll go save image as and I'm just gonna put this click save and I'm gonna put that in my desktop so there it goes into the desktop we'll go back to Pixlr now, the next thing to understand um, if you're new to this is about layers. Now, people get quite confused about layers, but really, um, and you'll see these in action in a, in a moment, um, all a layer is, is is a different component of the image that you're creating. And they're independent, that's why they're really useful, because you can work on the layers separately, okay, without affecting the other layers. So if you imagine, that the best analogy I think is, is if you imagine somebody who creates an oil painting, they might start off and they might put in the um, sky, okay, well that's the first layer. Then they might put in the sea, okay, or the ocean, that's the second layer. Then they might put in the land, that's a third layer. Then they might be putting some, say, trees, okay, and that's a fourth layer. Now if you do that in a program like Pixlr, those four different layers will be independent. So if you've put the tree on top of the, um, uh, the, the land and the sea, then if you decide later on, I don't like the tree and I want to change it, you could remove that tree and you'll still have the land and the uh, ocean and the sky and everything behind it. So I hope that kind of makes sense. But I think <clears throat> when we go into this in a bit more detail, you, you'll, you'll start, it'll start to make sense. So what we can do is um, firstly open this image, okay, the camera, as a layer. So I'm going to go to layer and I'm going to go to open image as layer. Okay, so we'll select that and I'll select, this is the image I just downloaded. Okay, so I will click open there and here we go. Now, there's a couple of problems with this, isn't there? The one is, I think it's a bit too big, so I'm going to reduce the size of it. But also, it's got this white background uh, around it. So let's solve those two problems. The first thing is, you can see that it's actually opened as a different layer. Okay. So if um, basically I resize this, it will just resize this camera because that's the that's the layer. Uh, you know layer one it's called here okay so it won't affect the other the other background image so what I'm going to do is go up to um, edit and free transform here okay so edit and free transform and you can see the image is highlighted now if you just drag it what will happen is you can change all the dimensions of it okay you can even turn it upside down it's amazing okay but that's not really what we want okay so when I click outside, it's going to say, do you want to apply the changes? No, I don't. We'll go back to how it was. So again, I'm going to select Edit and Free Transform, and I'm going to keep the image in proportion. And the way I can do that is just hold down Shift on my keyboard. So I'll just make this a bit smaller, and I think that's probably about the right size. Okay, so that's good. All right, and then I'll click outside. Do I want to apply the changes? Yes, please, I do. 
okay so I'll click yes now the next thing is I think I would like to um, move the image over to the right so what I can do is go up here to the move tool okay click there and just hold the left mouse button down and just drag this over okay so I'll put that there I think yeah some somewhere like that there I think will be fine and then also I'd like to get rid of this white around it now the way I can do that is actually go over to this tool which is called the sorry this one which is called the wand tool okay the, so the wand click there and all I'm going to do is click on the white area now if you look closely hopefully you can see a sort of um, moving dotted line around it or a dashed line now if I just click delete on my keyboard okay that removes that image so basically that's become transparent and the the image below it which is the background layer is showing through and that's exactly what I want okay so that's good now what I'm going to do is actually go up to oh that's fine okay so that's that's okay now what we can do next is actually go to uh, put some text okay so I'm going to click on a which is the, uh, the text tool or the type tool it's called and I'm going to put in um, the title of my website which um, I'm just going to call it something stupid like ready uh, steady shoot it's probably a terrible name but you know it's just an example okay like I said now the color is actually wrong because it's actually the same as the background color which is why you can't see the text so let's change that first of all I'm gonna click there and we'll just make let's just make it black okay it probably wouldn't be black but we'll just use that as an example okay so I move that down there that's great and we'll click OK now let's make this a little bit bigger and also bold so we'll make it bold here and we'll increase the size all right ready steady shoot okay all right so that's good or well that'll do anyway all right that's okay and um, I think what we'll do is just move this text down a little bit so we'll go back to the move um, tool and we'll just drag this down a little bit like that okay and uh, we can put in a let's put in a sub uh, title as well so I can call this um, photography tips for beginners okay and again we'll put this in um, I don't know we'll put this in sort of grey colour shall we something like that see how that looks okay and we'll make it a bit smaller something like that maybe uh, wrap a little bit yeah that'll do um, and uh, let's make it uh, italic as well alright um, we'll click OK we need to move this again so we'll click on the move tool again and put this there all right and basically you can start to see how the image can come together again obviously you can spend a lot more time on this than I am here but uh, hopefully it gives you an idea of some of the functions some of the other things you can do actually if you um, see we've got several layers now one for each element uh, on on the image which is really useful because then we can we can uh, work on those those elements separately without affecting the others um, but if I go back to the main title which is ready steady shoot so I'll click there okay there's a little button here which um, is basically called layer styles and you can change the text a little bit here so if I click there I'll just show you um, you can click put in things like drop shadows so if I click there and also um, click on that one get some options move this down a little bit and you can see if you play around with this you know just do it quickly uh, you can actually put in a little shadow maybe like that okay um, loads of other options here you can play around with them but I think that that'll do for now um, so we'll click uh, OK and then the next thing to do let's just um, crop this a little bit so what I'm going to do is go up to the uh, crop tool and we shall just do this I think so make it a little bit uh, not as high I think that's that'll work so we'll just select that and I'm just going to click um, enter on my keyboard okay 
brilliant. And I think, you know, we could go on and on, but I think that's enough to, to just show you some of the um, things that you can do. So all I'll do is click File, Save, okay? Now you can save the project if you like. So if you want to come back and work on this um, uh, with all the layers and just where you left off, then you can set, um, select this option, which is uh, Layered Pixelar Image. That's very useful. But what we'll do is just save it as a JPEG, I think, to begin with. So just a standard file. And uh, we'll do that. We'll click um, OK. And um, I'll just put save this in my desktop. All right. So if I go to my desktop now, and you can see website header here. There we go. That's the image we've just created. Now we, what we need to do is get this onto the website. So. I'm going to go back to my website where we were in the header section earlier. Click on Choose File, Website Header, Open. Click on Upload. Don't forget to do that. There we go. Um, now you can actually crop it here, so we don't really want to do that. So I'm going to drag that over there. Click on Crop and Publish. OK, that's good. And then we'll go back to the blog and let's refresh the blog. So. If we've done this correctly, our website header should appear. And there we go. Okay, so we've got our website header. So you can see it doesn't look great at all. I know that, um, but I just wanted to show you, you know, how you can do different styles and backgrounds and, and that kind of thing, get it on, on the site, and how you can include images as well on a different colored background. That's a really useful uh, little trick that I actually use some um, sort of probably once a week or twice a week I, I end up doing that for, for various reasons so it's, it's a worthwhile piece of knowledge to have but you can see it's a lot of fun and you can get stuck in um, and, and like you know like I said if you aren't really into graphics and you don't feel it's in your skill set you don't enjoy it so much that's a bit like you're a bit like me in which case you can outsource most of the work um, but still it's still useful to be able to do this kind of thing just to get them um, you know to do some basic um, uh, basic images which you can do quickly because sometimes it's, it's good you just want one little thing and it's good to be able to do that yourself rather than having to wait you know 24 hours or 48 hours for a designer to get back to you okay and equally if you want to change something then you can use these techniques as well so I hope that helps um, thank you very much for watching let me know what you think and um, I'll talk soon take care bye